and, and it's, it's a much more uh, optimal forum for our country going forward. You know, with Jerusalem, I mean, he had everybody trying to talk him out of doing that, and they would say, you know, the world would end, and, and, um, and uh, you know, he had the courage to make that decision. And I find every day there's issues where people say the world's going to end, and then the next morning the sun rises, and then the sun sets, and, you know, we keep pushing forward. And I find every day there's issues where people say the world's going to end, and then the next morning the sun rises, and then the sun sets, and you know we keep pushing forward. Hey guys, and welcome to this video called 430 Days Later, The Man-Child Meets the Scorpion, and I'm excited about this one. So 1 Corinthians 15.55, O oh, death, where is thy sting? This is what Paul says at the rapture of the church. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And of course we know a scorpion has a sting. Revelation chapter 12 verses 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. The great dragon is the same as the serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Uh, and that's also relating to the rapture of the church in Revelation 12. And in Deuteronomy 8.15, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions. And uh, that was obviously in the wilderness wanderings. So, Revelation chapter 12 continues, believe it or not. So, the Revelation chapter 12 sign was 100% legitimate. Anybody watching this video who knows all the things that were surrounding the sign has no doubt that the Revelation chapter 12 sign was 100% legitimate. If you're not familiar with that sign... Go and research the sign and find out about it and you will see that it is 100% legitimate. There's no ways that the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which happened on the 23rd of September 2017, was not legitimate. Less than a year later, in fact, before the sign, we saw the, uh, the August eclipse and we already saw the peace deal which comes to divide Israel at the very same time. This is not a coincidence. This is what it is pointing to. These things are happening in conjunction with each other. And folks need to start believing their Bibles that this is about to happen. And let's not forget that the heavens showeth forth knowledge. Psalm 19, God told us a story in Revelation chapter 12. And that story is to continue. And it is going to continue, but very slowly. God is telling his story in the heavens. And there's no more space along the, the constellations with Jupiter for a couple more years. God is telling his story with Jupiter, Tzedek righteousness in the heavens and after libra comes the scorpion scorpio and then after the scorpio comes the uh the rider with a bow and a crown which is the um which is revelation chapter six so god is telling us that the the, the story in the heavens and it's it's easy by the virtue of disappointment to forget that jupiter is still up there and god is telling the same story albeit very slowly so the I think there's a tendency to think, oh, could it be in a few more years? Maybe it's going to be in, you know, maybe it's going to be another three or four years. No, guys, Jupiter is progressing along the ecliptic and God is going to tell his story as it's going along. And it, 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 the next time Jupiter come, comes around will be another 12 years. So as it comes into Scorpio, which is the conflict, we should expect that something is going to happen. And that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping to show in this video. We don't have a few more years because God is telling his story in the heavens. We know that it's this time around. Jupiter is is what we're watching. That's the man child and that's the church. And uh, we're watching that progress through the heavens. So obviously um, after Virgo comes Libra. And I'm going to go through the celestial stuff just now. After Virgo comes Libra, which is the holy altar. And then comes Scorpio. And this is the most excited that I've been since God's glorious sign in the heavens on September 23rd, 2017. This is the is the um, the best conjunction that I've seen since that sign. So Kislev, uh, the ninth um, Hebrew month and November, which is the 11th uh, uh, Gregorian month. So obviously that's 9-11, which is very interesting. Also, all the calamities which happened on the 9th of Av. Uh, if you look in uh, throughout history, uh, there, there have been some some terrible, both um, temples were destroyed on the 9th of Av and there were expulsions from 
uh, from Spain and from England um, in in the 14 and 1500s. That happened on the 9th of Av and the First World War. Germany declared war on Russia on the 9th of Av, and and the uh, the the 9th of Av would be uh, the ninth day in Av, which is the 11th month. So we see 9 11, um, and and the number nine is is uh is associated with uh, the finality and, and judgment and of course uh, number 11 is associated with uh with chaos in in the bible so 9 11 is a is an interesting two numbers for for this to occur on so the month of kislev in the gregorian calendar is from the 9th of november to the 8th of december this year this is the ninth hebrew month which is the month of darkness as the days get progressively shorter and November is a very big month politically in the U.S. with the midterm elections coming up and um, all the, the things that are going to happen there. So that's uh, that's a very interesting thing to watch. Uh, my personal opinion of that is that 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 uh, that the um, that the Republicans are going to win it again. There's going to be a red wave, as they're calling it. But be careful of that because. Um, uh, Belshazzar was celebrating a an attempted defeat by the Medo Persians when uh when babylon was taken and uh, i'll just tell you that babylon fell 2555 years ago and it fell in in the in what the month which would have been october uh, november on the babylonian calendar so 2555 years ago babylon fell and past uh, notable events uh, which have happened in uh, Kislev, the 15th of Kislev in 167 BC was the abomination of desolation. That was Antiochus Epiphany. So that happened on the 15th of Kislev. These are these dates seem to be uh, related to the temple. And on the 17th of Kislev, 1947, this was when the United Nations General Assembly approved the plan for the partition of Palestine, which eventually led to the creation of Israel. And very interestingly, keep this one in mind, the 19th of Kislev, U.S. President Donald Trump announces that Jerusalem uh, is to be recognized as the capital city of the nation state of Israel. That was, um, that was the embassy. So that was on the 5th of December 2017. So keep that in mind and I'll remind you of that in the future. Then on the 20th of Kislev in 457 BC, Ezra, the leader of the Jewish people at the time of the building of the Second Temple, made a historic address to a three-day assemblage of Jews in Jerusalem, exhorting them to adhere to the teachings of the Torah and to dissolve their interfaith, interfaith marriages. And the Jewish people were on the verge of complete assimilation at the time following their 70-year exile in Babylon. So if you read chap uh, Ezra chapter 9 and 10, Ezra is told that all the people that uh, went to Babylon um, and who were in the the um, who were in exile have mixed themselves with uh, all the uh, the women who were not Israelites, and then he tears his his garments and he repents and he calls all the people to Jerusalem and gives them three days to come to Jerusalem, um, or they'll be considered out of out of um, out of Israel. And, uh, and and they all make a decision that they are going to um, that they're going to dissolve their interfaith marriages and the children of those marriages as well because obviously um, that was the holy seed and that was the the line through the Messiah so Ezra was very upset about that that was on the uh, the twentieth of Kislev and also very interestingly the nineteenth and the twentieth of Kislev is Yud Tez Kislev this is called the Rosh Hashanah or the New Year of Hasidim marking the liberation of the rabbi Zalman of, of Liadi and the subsequent blossoming of Shabbat Hasidim, which is celebrated for two days. Um, and uh, these are celebrated with Hasidic gatherings and increased commitment to the ways and the teaching of Hasidism. And Hasidism is a group within the ultra-Orthodox Haredi Judaism and is noted for its religious conservatism and social seclusion. So those are the guys with the round hats and the and the uh, the twirly uh, uh, hair, and uh, they they're the ultra ultra orthodox. Those are the guys who don't want to sit next to women on planes and and those kinds of things. So very very legalistic, and it's very interesting that this day is when these very legalistic Jews come together and they celebrate this guy who was um, uh, this uh, Rabbi Zalman was arrested. Um, 
by the government and then he was freed by the government and then that so and, and then he started this hasidic movement and they celebrated when this guy was actually set free by the government so of course we know there was another rabbi who was arrested but he certainly wasn't set free from the government so i find this very interesting that this is happening on this day this is a very legalistic group of uh, of of jews who are celebrating this hasidic rosh hashanah so um, if the rapture were to happen on that day, oh boy. So the 19th and the 20th of Kislev, and this is the, this is the big watch day because this is, uh, the, this is when the alignment is happening in the heavens. And uh, this, is, um, this is the very interesting day. This, is, this will be exactly one year on the Jewish calendar, one year after Donald Trump recognizes uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So um, we're yet to see if he's going to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine as well. That remains to be seen. But also on the Torah uh, reading, which is uh, the weekly Torah reading, is uh, Parshat Vayeshiv um, over that week. And uh, that's Genesis thirty-seven twenty-three, And they read this portion of the Torah for that week. And this portion of the Torah is when uh, they, the brothers of Joseph, sell him. Uh, they strip him of his coat and they 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 put him in the pit and they they sell him to the Ishmaelites so who take him down to Egypt. So it says, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. So this is what they're going to be reading on that week. His coat took many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into the a pit, and the pit was empty and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came with Gilead. So this is where they sell Joseph off. And later on, it just says, and they sent the coat on in verse 32, and they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not. And he knew it, and they said, It is my son's, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent into pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes the father of Joseph, and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. So on this on this day, or during this week, when this happens, uh, this is when they read this Parshat Vayeshiv. Also, guys, uh, the 19th uh, and the 20th of Kislev is, is a Tuesday, which uh, we know that uh, Tuesday receives a double blessing. And I've always said that if the rapture was to happen, it was going to happen on a Tuesday. So keep that in mind as well. And they will be reading Psalms 90 to 96 uh, during this week as part of the Torah uh, readings. And uh, if you read that, that's uh, there, there is a very um, there is a very apocalyptic uh, feeling to those verses. It's um, it's very it's talking about um, redemption and and all that kind of thing. So I invite you to read Psalms 90 to 96, and you'll you'll see what I mean. So the scorpion, the serpent, the dragon. Uh, if you've if you've been with me for a while, um, you'll know that I, I I started off by saying Mars was the dragon, and then um, uh, and then later on I, I I said that scorpion was the dragon, and that Mars and scorpion are associated with each other. So Antares, this uh, the the main star, the alpha star in Scorpio, is um, is the um, is the sister to Mars, if you will. So if you had to see Mars in the sky next to Antares, Antares burns a bright red, and so does Mars. But of course, Antares is a supergiant, and Mars is, uh, is one of the planets in our solar system. But those two are related, and, and uh, they say um, that Mars was created in, um, in Scorpio. So the, the Mars and, and Scorpio are the representation of the dragon and uh, and I've covered this in in another video there's lots of literature out there which which associates the two Mars the scorpion and the serpent and the dragon and the conflict and war and Jesus associates serpents and scorpions with the enemy Satan who is the dragon he says in Luke 10 19 behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Jesus makes the association between serpents and scorpions. And many references in historical literature associate Scorpio with the serpent dragon. Also associated with uh, Typhus, also known as Typhon, a giant serpentine creature. Scorpio is, is associated with Typhon. 
you research about Typhon, you'll see it's got all these snakes' heads coming out of this uh, creature, and that was associated with Scorpio as well. Uh, the constellation of Scorpio is where the ancient Tri Chinese Azure Dragon is located, uh, which is in, in the area of um, Libra and Scorpio. And if you see uh, my video, which is Dan, Libra and the Ho Holy Altar, there are references in that linking Scorpio with Satan and the dragon. So Scorpio is, um, I believe, is the dragon mentioned in Revelation chapter 12. And it was the largest of the constellation figures which included Libra. So uh, the Ovid, who was a Roman poet who lived during the, the, the reign of Augustus in 43 BC, wrote, Porigit in spatium signorum membra duorum, which says, extends into the space of two members of signs. So where, where um, Jupiter is right now in Libra, it's moving towards Scorpio. That used to be one sign and uh, they say that that scorpio's claws were grabbing onto the throne like satan is attempting to grab onto the throne and sc the scorpion is known to represent the conflict and has always been considered a cursed sign and some of the names for scorpio hebrew egyptian is akrab scorpion um, and that is also a conflict it also means conflict uh, and it's supposed that it was on the banners of the tribe of dan who is a serpent by the way uh, that's in um, genesis 39 i think it is uh, where um, uh, jacob gives the blessings to his sons and uh, the persians called it kazdum the scorpion the turks called it uzun kurugi which is the long-tailed and acadians um, called it good Gertab or the stinger. So if you look at um, Scorpio, obviously it's got a very long hook tail and uh, the dragon has a tail which which uh, which is Satan and it it, it, uh, it casts one third of the stars of heaven, which is uh, the fallen angels are, are cast down to heaven, down to earth with Satan. And uh, and the scorpion is a good representation of the dragon and of the uh, the serpent. Um, but uh, because it's 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 a better representation of some of uh, of the conflict trying to grab something because obviously a, a scorpion has huge claws and you can't really draw a snake trying to grab onto something or or even a dragon for that matter. So those three creatures, if you will, should be associated with one another and the conflict. And I found this very interesting. The alchemists held uh, Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, in high regard as they believed only when the sun was in Scorpio, which is part of the alignment I'm just about to show you, could iron be transmuted into gold. So the alchemists thought that iron could only be transmuted into gold when the sun was in Scorpio. And we, we, are, going to be, we are going to be transmuted into glory. And uh, the sun is only in the Scorpio section of the ecliptic for a mere six days of the year. So if you look at the portion of Scorpio, which actually uh, sits along the ecliptic, it's a very, very small uh, area. And it's, it's left, it, it is the left claw of uh, Scorpio that is, that is on the northern side of the ecliptic. So um, we know that uh, uh, the, the right hand is, is, con is considered a... A good thing in the Bible when uh, God says, sit at my right hand, and the left hand is, is not a good thing. So we see the left claw of Scorpio above the ecliptic, and that is where Jupiter is just about to head into. And Jupiter is in the Scorpio section of the ecliptic for 22 days every 12 years. It takes Jupiter 12 years to go around the ecliptic, and, and it's, it's, it's in that little portion of, of Scorpio only for 22 days. But what makes this conjunction extremely uh, special is that Mercury is also there, which is only in the ecliptic for five days. So we see the Sun, we see Jupiter, and we see Mercury conjunct, a perfect conjunction, a perfect straight alignment. And these are only in that section of the ecliptic for very short periods of time. And this is an extremely rare and perfect alignment, which I'm unable to find in history. I went back, um, I went back about a thousand years, and I couldn't see it. I kept uh, either the sun was over to the left, or Mercury wasn't there, or, or um, uh, but when Jupiter was was in this particular spot, 
uh, I could never find the Sun and Mercury perfectly aligned. So this is a very, very rare occasion. And Job 9.9 calls this sign the chambers of the south, referring to its opposition to Taurus and the Pleiades directly across the sky. Uh, Job 9.9 says, which maketh Octurus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. So if you look on the ecliptic, uh, the chambers of the south are on the opposite side of where Orion and the Pleiades is. So uh, Scorpio is, is, uh, is the opposite uh, constellation on the other side of the of, of the ecliptic so uh, this is what job is talking about the chambers of the south is talking about scorpio and in psalm 19 4 it says their line has gone out throughout all the earth this is talking about the constellations and them showing forth wisdom and their words to the end of the world in them he hath set the tabernacle for the sun which is a bridegroom, that's the sun, is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So it's talking about the chambers of the south. And in Psalm 19, it's talking about the sun as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. And in Psalm 84, 11, it says, For, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. So we, when we see the uh, Jupiter and the Sun in alignment, and we see it right over the left claw of the Scorpion, which is Akrab, which is the which is the conflict, um, and we see Mercury there. That is a that is a, a very very special um, a, a very very special occasion. But not only that, it is happening exactly four hundred and thirty days after the Revelation chapter 12 sign, and I'm going to show all of this to you in, uh, in, 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 in a few moments. 430 days, exactly to the very day after Revelation chapter 12, there is, a, there is an alignment on a very, very small portion of the ecliptic between Jupiter, the Sun, and Mercury, which is, which is, which is tiny, which, which I'm just about to show you. So, Genesis 15.5 says and he brought him forth this is abraham and said to abraham look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be and in exodus twelve forty one, the very fulfillment of god saying to abraham look towards the heavens was fulfilled exactly 430 years later the self the self same day and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self-same day, the Bible makes a point of that, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So notice there it says all the hosts of the Lord. It doesn't say the Hebrews or the Israelites. It says that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. And Paul confirms this in Galatians 3.17. He's talking about the covenant. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So Paul is telling us there that, uh, that because they came out of Egypt uh, doesn't mean that the, that the covenant is over, but that obviously Christ was the seed of Abraham, was the, was the, one, the, the specific seed of Abraham. And in uh, Exodus 12:40, uh, it confirms this. Now, the yawning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So, after 430 years, God separated the hosts of Israel from the land of Egypt. So, there's there's the, the, the this, there's a there's the covenant uh, which God made with Abraham, and there's the dividing 430 years later. But also in Genesis 10, 25, it says, And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg. And Peleg is the same as uh, is the same from the root Perez. For in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Yoktan. So this is telling us about uh, Eber, who gave birth to Peleg. And he called him Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And it says, And unto Eber, and Eber means the region beyond, were born two sons. This is a confirmation. One chapter, uh, one Chronicles chapter one nineteen. The son, the name of one was Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided, 
And in Genesis eleven seventeen it says, And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years. So there's talking about a dividing here, and there's talking about another 430 years. So you can see there's a pattern here that God's trying to tell us in the Bible. And years for days in the Old Testament versus days for years in the New Testament. Um, in Numbers 14, 33 to 34, it says, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be waste in the wilderness. After the number of days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, ye shall bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. So this is God being very, very uh, angry. This was the provocation when they went to the, um, when they went into, and they, they, um, they spied out the land, and they saw that, 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 that they looked as grasshoppers with the giants, and they came back and they were fearful and then they wandered in the wilderness for for um for 40 years because they had spied out the land for 40 days so so the years were were uh, the days were replaced with years and in ezekiel the same thing happens god tells ezekiel to lie upon thy left side and lay the iniquity of the house of israel upon it this is also 430 years to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon thou shalt bear their iniquity for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of days. 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou, sh thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. So that is 390 days plus 40 days, that's 430 days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So we see that the, there were... There were years for days in the in the Old Testament, in Genesis uh, fifteen five, and he brought him forth ab abroad and said, "Now look now toward heaven and tell the stars." Four hundred and thirty years later, the promise was fulfilled, and Jesus says, "And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads up, for your redemption draweth nigh." And Peter tells us that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So the New Testament would convert that backwards. So because we have grace, it says instead of 430 years, we have 430 days. So the promise, when we look up to the sky, is fulfilled 430 days afterwards. Whereas the promise when Abraham looked up to the sky was 430 years and the, the, uh, the Israelites came out of Egypt. Could it be that 430 days later, the fulfillment or the prophecy which that was telling about, our promised land, is going to happen and the rapture is going to happen on that day? We shall see. So here we are at the Revelation chapter 12 sign, uh, the famous sign, September the 23rd, 2017. And take a notice where Jupiter is at the moment. That was uh, that was the man-child, and and obviously um, the uh, the uh, the crown upon her head was uh, the twelve stars, and the sun. Uh, she was clothed in the sun, and the moon was at her feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward. I'm going to skip forward 430 days, exactly 430 days. I'm going to step forward. Okay, here you can see over here 430 days. I'm going to step forward. And this is when we have this perfect alignment in Scorpio. So as you can see, this is the, the left uh, claw of Scorpio, which is sticking up just above the ecliptic. Uh, the, the star is Akrab, which is, um, uh, which is the conflict. And uh, as you can see, what I'm going to do is just go back a couple of days. You can see that they all meet right here. See, Mercury is actually in retrograde motion. Jupiter is coming into the sign and they're right there on the 27th, right on the 27th. That's when they all meet and align perfectly. And as I mentioned, you can see the sun is only in there for six days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and the sun is gone. And Jupiter is there for about 22 days and Mercury is only there for about five days. So as you can see coming up to uh, what is November the 27th, and that is uh, Kislev the 19th and 20th, which is a Tuesday, is exactly where um, 
there, there is this alignment. So I'm going to show you the alignment as well in the sky uh, from a, 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 a solar system perspective. Uh, here you can see uh, the Earth. Uh, the Earth is this blue dot over here. And uh, there's Mercury. And there's the Sun in the, in the middle there. And that's Jupiter. So there's a perfect alignment here, which is happening. And if we look at Venus, Venus is actually right where Jupiter was. So from Earth's perspective, it is a perfect alignment. Earth, Mercury, the Sun and Jupiter. And those, those are the planets which have uh, magnetospheres as well. Uh, and they are in a perfect alignment. And Venus, from Earth's perspective, is right at the waist of Virgo, which is where Jupiter was when uh, the Revelation chapter 12 sign happened on the 23rd of September. So let me just go back to here. As you can see there, you can see that's Venus there on the right hand side. That is where Jupiter was. Um, let's go back. Let's step backwards. And you can see that's where Jupiter is. So this is Revelation chapter 12, September 23rd, 2017. I'm going to step forward 430 days. And Venus is right there. That's where, where it was. And you can see that there is this absolutely perfect alignment happening right at the claw of uh, Scorpio, who is the conflict. And I believe that Scorpio is the representation of the dragon. And this 430 days could be the fulfillment of uh, the, the promise which Jesus said, look up. To the sky for your redemption draweth nigh that's the same thing that god said to abraham look at the stars and uh, your your seed will be as uh, the stars of heaven and that is the same so the promise to made to abraham was 430 years later the promise that jesus said look up 430 days later after the revelation chapter 12 sign so what we should look out for here, guys, is um, is obviously the signing of this peace deal. And uh, if there is any recognition of a Palestinian state um, on the land of Israel on the very same day, uh, which is the uh, the 19th of Kislev, last year was the 5th of, 5th of December, the 19th of Kislev was the 5th of December. This year, uh, the 19th of Kislev is the 27th of November. So something else I wanted to show you guys, and I hope I can explain this um, because it's 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 fairly complicated. But on September uh, the 23rd, 2017, um, which which was the Revelation chapter 12 sign, what I um, why I was so convinced that the rapture was going to happen on that day was because if I added 1,260 days. I saw an incredible alignment which was happening in the sign of Capricorn. And then if I added another 1260 days, I saw an incredible alignment which was happening in the horns of Taurus. So that's why I was so convinced. And I'm going to show you those two alignments um, just now. But then it occurred to me that in Revelation 8.12 it says, And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So the days and the nights are going to get much shorter. And that's what Jesus says, that the days will be shortened. And in Isaiah 24, it says, The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. So that's going to be the, um, that's going to be the, the, the days and the nights uh, uh, being shorter on the earth. So what I did was I, um, I thought to myself, what happens if I, from the, from the Revelation chapter 12 sign on the 23rd of September, if I add 1,260 days where I saw that incredible alignment, which I'll show you just now, and then I deducted um, one third of that 1260 days because if the days are going to be shortened then instead of um 1260 days from uh, mid tribulation it's actually as far as we are concerned it would be 840 days if that makes sense so uh, i hope that um if i explain it uh when when we're looking at the celestial um uh, program that it will be more clear but just to say that uh that would that would 
mean that March the 6th, 2021, if, it, if, the, if the rapture of the church happened on Revelation chapter 12, uh, then it would be 1,260 days. But if the days were shortened, that would be 840 days. So what, what I do is I go to the mid-tribulation point in, um, in March 6, 2021, and then I come backwards 840 days. So, so instead of at the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which would be 1,260 days backwards from mid-tribulation, I go to 840 days because the days have been shortened. Then I get to November the 17th, which is 10 days before the sign happens. And November the 17th is, uh, is the 9th of Kislev, which is 10 days before um, and uh, 420 days after the Revelation chapter 12 sign. And November the 27th, which is the, which is the big one, that's the, that's, the, that's the alignment that we're talking about. That's the 19th of Kislev, which is exactly one year from Donald Trump recognizing Jerusalem and the capital of Israel, which was the 5th of December 2017 or the 19th of Kislev 5778. And the question is, will he recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine exactly one year later on the Hebrew calendar? Obviously, it's not going to be the, the, the 5th of December, but um, it would be the 27th of November. And, and, and we need to keep our eyes sharp and watch out for that. So let me just explain how I mean this to you with the days being shortened. This is the Revelation chapter 12 sign. And if I add 1,260 days to this Revelation chapter 12 sign, and I step forward 1,260 days, you can see here in the middle, I step forward. This is why I was so convinced that the rapture was going to happen on that day, because this is a perfect, this is a perfect sign in the heavens of the Antichrist entering into the temple. This is the sign of Capricorn. This is the sacrificial, uh, the goat is being sacrificed. It's in a vulnerable position. It has a, 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 a tail of vitality coming up. Let me make that a bit more um, a bit more clear so you can see that uh, that sign there. So there's, there's the sign of Capricorn. Okay, there's the Saturn. Uh, that's the planet of Satan in the middle of the sacrificial sign. So the, that would be the temple. And, and Jupiter Tzedek is, is being pushed out. That's the Jews uh, being uh, going into the wilderness. And you can see there's Mercury right there. So that's why I thought this is a perfect sign for mid-tribulation exactly 1,260 days later, right? So then I also, uh, uh, because the two witnesses were witness for 1,260 days, and then, and then Israel will go into the wilderness where she's protected for 1,260 days. That's also in Revelation. So I step forward another 1,260 days, and why, this is, again, you see perfectly Jupiter and Mars in the horns of Taurus, like, like judgment. That's the, that, that, would be, that would be the second coming of Jesus Christ. So that fits perfectly 1,260 1, days times two. But if I go backwards, and this is what I was thinking, was if I, if I deduct the number of days, so instead of, instead of 1,260 days, because the days are going to be shortened, instead of going 1,260 days Backwards from the mid-tribulation, I went uh, 840 days because that is uh, one third of the days uh, shortened. So if I go back eight, 840 days and I step backwards, okay, then that would lead me to November the 17th. And that is as this November the 17th is just as Jupiter is about. Hey guys, just about here, I lost my camera and my audio, but I'm showing you that deducting uh, 840 days lands on uh, November the 17th, which is 10 days before uh, this incredible alignment on November the 27th. So there you can see it's it's 10 days before, and uh, this is a, a very high watch period, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. If you liked it, Please share it with people. Uh, this, I think this could be it. God bless you and see you in the sky.